Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Eatbook Vlogs and in this episode, the producers have challenged me to prepare a three-course meal for my parents. That's right, right right in the kitchen again. <laughs> so since Father's Day is just around the corner, I kind of figured that I should do something special and using Circuit Breaker or Phase 1 for that matter as an excuse, why not cook for them instead of going out since we cannot go out anyway? That way, I also save a lot of money. I don't know if my food will be edible or not, but like I said, I'm cooking for my parents, which means unconditional love. Okay, so my parents really, really love Italian cuisine. Like every single celebratory event, right? We always go to an Italian restaurant. So I'm gonna be doing an Italian three course meal, and I'm thinking of a bruschetta for appetizers. For the main course, I could always do an aglio olio, but but I want to challenge myself in making a carbonara because I've never done a carbonara before. And last but not least, I can do like a panna cotta. Is that Italian? I think it's Italian. Yes, let's do a panna cotta. Panna, pa, pa. Let's just cut to the chase and show you guys the ingredients. Okay guys, so I put on my specs because it's game mode time. All right, so right now we are in the kitchen and I'm about to show you what I'll be using for the bruschetta. This recipe is actually um, learned from the days when I was a junior chef in Marche. Yes, fun fact, I was a junior chef. Bruschetta is basically a bread dish. You can use a baguette, which I am using right now. Okay, so we're gonna be cutting a tomato. This portion. Okay, so recently I saw a trick um, to do when you are cutting onions. Basically, if you don't want to cry, right, you basically just stick your tongue out and then continue cutting and apparently it won't make you cry. So let's try that. <laughs> I know it kind of looks stupid but never mind, it's okay. Nice! I didn't cry! Wow! Okay, so now that we have our diced vegetables, I'm just gonna put olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Whoa, that is strong. Just cradle the little tomato babies. Let's just put some salt, some pepper. We're gonna create a garlic spread for the bread itself. Like small little pumpkin, you know. Leave butter, just half, and mix it. So let's open the bread up. So what we do is we just take this, we cut in half. Let's put some garlic butter spread. So let's do three butter and three non-butter. Right now I'm gonna put the cheese. So now, just put in the toaster and it will toast really really nicely. Okay, so up next, we're gonna do the dessert. I realized that I need it to be refrigerated for quite some time. Let me just show you guys the ingredients. I'm gonna melt this agar-agar into water so that I have a uh, agar-agar solution that I will put in the cream and whatnot. Boil this water. So I was actually looking for gelatin powder which is easier but I guess agar aga is the same. Oh my god, I don't know how to cook. Ah! Oh no! Shit! It burned! Okay, let's do that again. Zoom! And water. I think editor, you can just put the SpongeBob time stamp one eternity later. Are you gonna be ready for this jelly? Are you gonna ready for this jelly? Are you gonna ready for this? Is my body so bootylicious for you, babe? <laughs> Ew. Ah! Okay, so now we're done with the agar agar solution. Let me just do the panna cotta main thingy itself, which is cream. So they actually asked for heavy cream and um, NTC don't have because everybody is suddenly a Xiao Baker. I am going to use a substitute which is thickened cream. I actually checked on the internet and they said that it's interchangeable. Just going to put everything inside. Oof! Quarter cup of sugar. I need a quarter tablespoon of vanilla extract. This one is 
one two I don't know if this works but let's hope that it does oh, oh, ah, ah. Huh? oh shit oh shit Strain it. I'm so sad. But the thing is, there's no use crying over spilled milk. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna pour it in. Time to put this in the fridge. Let's do the main course now. So let me go and get a proper, or at least the most appropriate pan. Excuse me, light. Thank you very much. The pasta we're gonna use for the carbonara is a linguini. I think just put everything la. Just gonna put some EVOO. Oh, oh. We're gonna be using bacon bits because I'm lazy to cut my own bacon. We do have some garlic over here, so let's put this practice in. One handed, guys. One hand it. I'm gonna let it boil maybe. Hey Google, count down 45 seconds. Okay, for how long? 45 seconds. I already saved 45 seconds. Second timer for 5 seconds. Oi! Starting now. No! Let me just put the pasta in. I don't want it to be frying when I put the egg inside. If not, it will just look like an egg noodle. Oh no! Oh no, it become egg noodle! Oh man, I think I was too engrossed in doing B-rolls. So, I added the egg at the wrong time. So, it has become half a carbonara, half an egg noodle. It still tastes good though. I'ma be grating some parmesan cheese. Crispy and very nice. The cheese is melting. Huh? Mm. Good. You can you can taste the um, bacon and then the egg. But I think the egg curdled a bit. No, it's okay. And it made the um, pasta creamier. Yes. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it seems like my parents liked it. I think I screwed up in my carbonara, but you know what? Like I said, unconditional love. <laughs> Let's just time lapse people eating. Alright, so I'm done with the challenge, and I must say that. It is so tiring eh? A whole new respect to parents out there or people filling in parental roles. The whole time, I was just so tired physically because of the action doing and I think the heat itself contributed to the physical tiredness. I was also mentally drained because I was basically looking up recipes and trying to tweak them because I don't have certain ingredients here and there and taking note of the timing la, the measurements la and multitasking was a whole new ball game which is something that I always struggle with. I cannot multitask at all. The added stress of me having to do this and hoping that the end product is nice was just insane because my mom is a great cook. Although like it's unconditional love, right? Um, she will still be giving me critiques. Ah. So I'm like, oh my God, I need to try at least to impress her a little bit, um, which I did for the bruschetta and the panna cotta. But 
my pasta was um, kind of fail. Lucky enough, my dad just enjoyed the whole meal, so that's great. I did have some learning experiences in terms of the actual cooking wise, which was um, how to do a proper carbonara. My mom gave me tips. Aside from that, I am very thankful that my family was very understanding because I had to shoot at a really late timing and they basically just had dinner at 10 to 11 because they were waiting for me, right? But other than that, it was a great experience. I would say that people should do it. Take note of the timing, maybe if you know you are slower, right? Do it earlier, but it's something that I would definitely do more often just because I feel like if you give food to your loved ones that you slaved away and cooked, right? Like this is like, for example, level one, right? But because you are the one who made it, even the level one can bring up to another level because of the love and the effort and the recipient of that food will be like, oh, thank you for watching this episode of Eat Boo Vlogs. Check out more of our videos over there. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And ebook wishes all fathers a happy Father's Day. Yay! Till next time. Bye!